I am Cami. You all know my lovely co-host Sarah, and we have a special treat for you. We have Charles Kensington the Third himself with us, Mr. Marcus Rosner. Hi, Marcus. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you Absolutely. for coming on. <laughs> this is exciting. We're very, we're very excited to get some perspective from poor <laughs> Charles's side of things. <laughs> So, first of all, congrats on the wedding. Oh, well, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. newlywed. Yeah, one month as of two days ago. So, yeah, That's newlyweds. Awesome. And, yeah. Wow. Very and exciting. We got married in Guatemala. We got married in Guatemala on New Year's Eve. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was pretty magical special time um spent a week out there we had a bunch of different uh, parties all week long and our friends and family all came down and yeah it was pretty it was pretty amazing any special awesome. reason why you picked guatemala i mean that's a million dollar question that's what everybody everybody always asks is why why <laughs> guatemala which is a very practical good question um honestly <laughs> it's 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 kind of the reason sort of within the question itself it was just sort of we wanted somewhere that we'd never been. We wanted somewhere off the beaten path that it was sort of a uh, diamond in the rough. And so when we started the process of trying to figure out where we wanted to do it, um, we did a lot of research as far as um, plane distances to tropical locations because we knew we wanted to do it on New Year's Eve. Um, and uh, and then we saw these these incredible uh, photos and videos of these these um, historic monuments that are in uh, in the heart of Guatemala that uh, that you can rent out and uh, and do these sorts of events. And there were these cathedrals that were made in like the 1600s and 1700s that were taken down by earthquakes because it's a very volcano active country. Yeah. Um, and so. Yeah, we just kind of fell in love with how it looked. We reached out to a wedding planner down there. We went and visited the country and spent a month there seven months ago and uh, fell in love with it even more. And yeah, it was really for the adventure is kind of a That's short answer wonderful. of all that. Yeah. Fair enough. That's awesome. awesome. How much Spanish did you learn while you were down there? Oh, man. I, I feel like I pick it up like very quickly and then I forget it all. <laughs> very quickly <laughs> when we were down there seven months ago i was i could order coffee i could i mean i could order like an entire meal and then we in fact this time i was sitting down with my friends and family trying to educate them and i felt like an idiot because i couldn't remember anything so pobrecito yeah. <laughs> yeah, see? no idea like, that means you poor thing <laughs> ah, <no>, thank you <laughs> <clears throat> oh goodness well that's lovely i yeah i was looking at some of the wedding pictures that you posted they're just very beautiful so congratulations yeah. thank you um another kind of just introductory question what what inspired you to become an actor how did you get into the field great question um yeah i uh what did inspire me there, there's the the standard story that i tell is basically i was uh on this graduation trip with my mom one day uh, in New York City. Uh, we had never really gotten to travel much growing up. We didn't have a lot of money. And so we kind of saved up. And this was like a graduation gift um, for graduating high school and um, sort of like in the, the end of a long road for my mom and I, because she was a single mother for much of my youth. And so it was like this trip that we got to take together to New York City. Oh, and uh, and goodness, we were walking down. That is special. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was it was pretty amazing. It was just going to like a big city that I'd seen in movies all my all my youth and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And so um, we were walking up Broadway and I saw the, um, the New York Film Academy. Uh, they had like a, a marquee outside. And I remember we either popped in or I looked it up. I can't even remember anymore. Um, but it was the it was the acting school, and uh, and I just it, it was the first time that it ever dawned on me that you could like learn to act, and uh, and so when I got home, I just looked up the closest uh, school that I could attend that would uh, teach me to act because I had this secret <laughs> burning curiosity and interest in the craft, even though I didn't take any drama in high school or anything like that. Um, and yeah, one thing led to another. I went to Vancouver Film School and so on and so forth. But other things like the movie Jerry Maguire was a big inspiration growing up. I, I in the in 
lieu of an absentee father, I saw Tom Cruise throughout the 90s as this giant figure who like uh -huh. had a passing resemblance to me. And I thought, that's who I want to be. And like, <laughs> there so, you go. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about that career of yours for a little bit, because we we were looking it up. You've got a very impressive resume. You've been all over the place, especially Thank for you. your first project being, what, in 2012? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did your research. Yeah, 2012 was my first. Uh, I was reflecting on that at uh, New Year's, actually, thinking. I bet you so were. It's, it's great to hear somebody say, like, look at all you've done, because it's, it's <laughs> funny. I think no matter what you do, you reach milestones, like your 10 year mark, and you think, like, oh, I could have done, could have done more, maybe. But um, so thank oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we all have those moments, but I think yeah. you've done incredibly well for yourself. <laughs> thank you. Yes, definitely. Um, what would you say? is your favorite non-Hallmark project that you've worked on? Um, my favorite non-Hallmark project that I worked on, I have something coming out in June. Uh, it's a movie with uh, Lionsgate uh, and BuzzFeed Studios. They did a co-production. It's called My Fake Boyfriend. Um, it's I'm starring alongside uh, Sarah Hyland and uh, oh, wow. uh, Dylan Sprouse. Um, I don't know why they cast me, but um, they did and I'm grateful. <laughs> Uh, and so I'm really excited to, to see how that all, uh, pans out. So, so you would say that's your favorite one? I think it's probably recency bias, but yeah, uh, probably there's short films I've done that, that really sure. stick out in my mind and, uh, things like that. Everything I produce now is, is holds a very special place in my heart, but, um, those are more Hallmark leaning things anyway. So, uh, yeah, non Hallmark, probably that movie. Okay, awesome. so now favorite Hallmark project? Favorite Hallmark project. Um, and I know it's I mean, kind of hard to differentiate between Hallmark and Up, so either one. There's Hallmark, good. Up, Lifetime, anything like that is yeah, fine sure. yeah. for the, the qualification. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the more romantic. I would say <laughs> I, I just uh, produced and starred in one. Um, this past uh, fall in my hometown of Edmonton. It's uh, at the moment, it's titled uh, For the Love of Pasta. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that was just an incredible experience. I'm trying to bring film back to my hometown. And so, uh, okay. so yeah, we, we brought a movie there and produced it. And I starred in it alongside uh, Rebecca Dalton. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Um, Not familiar so. with her, but we looked her up, so. Oh yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. She's wonderful, amazingly talented and, and yeah great person um so i think that one might be my favorite um in this genre yeah recency bias again i know i know right <laughs> it's like, I think i'm sure it is but that's I've never we, done that yeah <laughs> that's how we keep pushing forward i don't want to think the best thing was years ago you know? uh, that that's that's a really that's really good point yeah that's completely <laughs> fair so when you got started especially in the hallmark genre um, you kind of had several roles that were a little bit the other man, <laughs> so to speak. Um, what, what has that experience been like, um, just kind of coming in and being that character that a lot of people don't like? <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I mean, I think it's so funny. I, I think I did in like the span of 24 months, like two years, I must have done six or seven of like that jerk boyfriend from New York City who hates Christmas. <laughs> And, uh, and for years, people would be like, he never gets the girl because those things would just re-air and re-air and re-air. Um, and um, so it's, uh, I don't know, I didn't love playing those roles, I'll be honest, because it's so, <laughs> it's so one note, like you're so, yeah. I mean, it, you know, they tend to be, if, I'm sure yeah. better actors would, would make them more complex. And I certainly tried to uh, at times, but it, you, you just you're kind of just such a wet blanket that it's not a lot of, it's not a lot of fun. Um, you're not evil enough to be like delightfully evil. You know, you're just kind of like, boo, like, I don't want to meet your parents cause I suck. Um, <laughs> so it was a lot more fun to, uh, to be the dude, I guess that, that, that gets the girl. So. That's, that's I remember <laughs> when my mom, my mom and I decided that we would watch Yes I Do together, and we said, "Look, Marcus, 
is the, is the guy. He gets the girl. Yes! But it still took him long enough. Eight hours later. <laughs> even, even that, it's just so funny because it was so... <laughs> I was almost embarrassed that like people were like rejoicing for me. Like he did it. He finally did it. I was like, thank you. Well, it's because it's because we wanted to see you finally get the girl. Yeah, yeah. No, it was very much appreciated. It was uh, <laughs> it just becomes so apparent how how apparent it was to everybody else that I was constantly striking out. So kind right. of con so kind of contrast that for us, the being able to play the main the main character the love interest it, was that more fun was did you did you find more stuff to do with the character what what was the different experience for you besides obviously the up and pay and you know being in <laughs> being on set more often and stuff like that <clears throat> yeah i mean just the being on set even it's funny these movies they shoot uh in a pretty quick uh, time span. I am sure most people know that. And so when you're doing that, uh, I, like I would call it like the number three or the number four or whatever, every call sheet has, you know, uh, right. a, a ranking like the number one is always the, the, the female lead in these. And the number two is the, the male lead and then so on and so forth down the list. So it was usually number three on the call sheet and just, uh, you're, you, you're only there for like a third of the shoot, uh, if that, and, and the camaraderie of being on set and being a part of one of these projects, like these projects kind of feel like summer camp in a way. Mm -hmm. I think that's why, like, they're so fun to make. They always have been. Um, and, but you don't really get to experience that as much when you're one of those uh, characters that's just dropping in. And so it's definitely given me perspective. Like whenever the number three guy comes in on, on my movies now, I'm, I'm always like, here, man, how you doing? You having any fun? You having a good time? Let's be good friends. Like, cause I just remember, <laughs> being in some scenarios where that wasn't always uh, wasn't always the case. And I, I just felt like the bad guy. And I was like this new young actor and um, just wanting to like talk to other actors on set. And uh, so uh, I can't even remember what the question was anymore, but um, the, as far as playing it, you get more screen time. So yeah, you get to try more things. Your job is certainly much more secure. You feel like as a lead, you can sort of dictate a little more, like you can change lines and, and make suggestions. And now that I'm producing them, I can rewrite the script entirely and stuff. So um, yeah, somewhere in there's well, an that, answer. That's awesome. That leads right into our other question. We saw that you were executive producing um, and doing some different producing on, let's see, you were an executive producer on Christmas with a Crown and then also um, for the upcoming For the Love of Pasta. What um, what interested you in working behind the camera? Yeah, um, well, for a long time, I mean, I think the standard question for so many actors is like, are you, do you want to direct? Are you going to direct? Are you interested in directing? I um, am a lot less interested in directing. I think it just goes back to that whole Jerry Maguire thing. I saw this fast talking sports agent guy and for a long time I wanted to be a fast talking sports agent before I realized I didn't actually want to be a fast talking sports agent. I wanted to play one on screen or, right. you know, I just wanted to do that sort of thing. But I do have sort of a, a business um, inclination. And, and so I get really excited about the thought of putting projects together, um, teaming people up, um, figuring out all the logistics, location scouting, script rewrites, just, I, I like being in meetings, um, which I don't think is uh, common amongst uh, a lot of actors that <laughs> that I've run into. And so I kind of just saw that as, as a path that I'd like to try. And then I think, you know, sometimes in life, these things sort of have a serendipitous uh, effect. And I got a call shortly after I, I knew I wanted to try this to star in and EP um, Christmas of the Crown, which was shot in my hometown. And that sort of introduced me to this, the whole infrastructure of, um, of uh, filmmaking producers in my hometown that are trying to bring this genre of films to Edmonton, Alberta. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just barged in there and said, I want to be part of this gang and I've, have come, become a major part of it. And I'm now working to bring more projects and, and we do a lot of other things together and have our eyes on much bigger things down the road. So, yeah. That's, that's great, especially doing it in your hometown. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a big motivation. So can you tease anything about uh, pasta? Yeah, what can I tease about pasta? Um, I mean, it's a, it's a 
it's a standard boy meets girl love story, but there's a real, I, I mean, I don't watch all the movies, but I feel like this twist has not necessarily been done in them before. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it's, yeah, I, we tried to, yeah, I don't know, we tried to make it a little less predictable, um, but with, while staying in the mold, so, God, that's a bad tease. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess is the answer. <laughs> uh, it'll air this summer. Is the, is the tease? That'll, <laughs> hey, that'll work. That'll work. Yeah. So, who is someone that you haven't been paired up with that you would love to work with in the future? Uh, Autumn Reeser, maybe. We said her. <laughs> we Did were. You? We were going through a list like, hmm, who would we want to see? And Autumn Reeser was on our list. That's funny. That's that so is funny. funny. I wonder why. I wonder why. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That is why did it, that now it's going to seem weird that I just pulled that out so fast. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're She's all. She's been in a lot of movies lately. So, so yeah, she of, has. Yeah. yeah, I see. I, she did one with Andrew. Uh, yes. last summer yeah. and uh, I saw the trailer for that and it looked awesome um, I just think she's really great I just think she's really talented and yeah yeah absolutely so Sarah you want to say who who you thought of first? Um, we both came up with one that we thought we okay would like to yeah this is yeah. this is much more interesting for me this, <laughs> I I actually came up with Brooke Nevin I have really enjoyed her a few times she was in um, the crashing what was it crashing into crashing Christmas through the snow crashing through the snow last year um and then what she's been in so many oh, yeah. she was been been in a others. lot she was in a lot of the older ones that are now being shown on hallmark drama uh, okay. i don't know if you've watched any sign seal delivered but she's but she's oh. been in one of those she was in one of those opposite kevin mcgarry yeah mm -hmm. was that yeah. was that a series uh before it was a series of movies like a, a tv series yes. yeah hallmark? so there was okay. the pilot there was the pilot they started movie, it like a movie and then and mm. then the series and then a christmas special and then uh and they did a whole bunch of movies a, a bunch of movies yeah when i first started acting in vancouver i, th I feel like i auditioned for that a bunch sign seal delivered i can still see the email yeah. subject line right. in my brain. okay <laughs> that would have been and that, and, oh man i would have loved to see you on one of those stories <laughs> I was, those are very, they're very heartfelt. It was like, I don't think I've not cried during any of them. They're just no. all amazing. <laughs> written. Well, they're effective then. That's great. They're, they're really good. Yeah. I thought of Kayla Wallace. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know who that is. I, we haven't met her. Uh, I know exactly who she is because we have a lot of mutual friends. Um, yeah. She seems lovely too. I haven't seen uh, any of her work, but I, I hear wonderful things and uh yeah that'd be great too well she is on when calls the heart right now so yeah yeah <laughs> that's, that's how i know yes. Yes. <laughs> but yeah like i said autumn reeser was on our very short list so, so that's awesome <laughs> so speaking of working with someone else from when calls the heart um i wanted to bring up harbor island for a minute um i just saw that one recently uh, with morgan cohen um who's from when hope calls and um, I, I loved it, by the way. That was probably my favorite thing I've seen you in besides One Calls the Heart. And it's been going on and on. I, I have been talking about it a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I loved the contrast of like how you were a small town boy and you kept calling her city girl. Um, and so I was curious what, what you are more like. Are you more of a small town guy or more of an uptown guy like Charles? Hmm. Uh, I'm from a very small town uh and now i live in big cities and so i i guess it, i mean there's definitely a mix in there when i'm in sure. when i'm back home they they call me hollywood uh and not <laughs> in a complimentary way and then uh sometimes when i'm in the big city i get cowboy type uh, uh references and so uh which is I, honestly that's exactly where i would want to be um is sort of straddling both sides of that that equation because I feel like a lot of the world is sort of myopic in in their views on those two things and so yeah I don't know I hope I'm a balanced mix I guess is my response. 
which do you prefer playing? Um, I mean, a lot of the times in this genre, the city guy is the jerk who hates Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Not typically that guy. What I would like to try is, is uh, I feel like I've been the small town guy. I, I have very much like a traditional, like, um, leading man type thing going on where so I think they see me chopping wood a lot and wearing flannel and stuff like that and so so I end up doing that a fair bit but I would like to try doing a nice version of the city guy a, a little bit more I think going forward so I'm pitching that would be those fun kinds of things yeah that would be wow. fun there was there was a Christmas movie a couple of years ago that flipped it and the city mm. and the city was the good was the good guy and I loved that because I was just like it was so unexpected <laughs> mm. There's a guy that does the sort of the suave city guy thing in like a really good leading man. Ryan, uh, Ryan Pavey. Ryan Pavey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's got a cool like smoldery like city guy <laughs> thing going on that he can pull off. You know, I don't think a lot of That's guys true. can do that thing. So. <laughs> You're probably thinking of when they did uh, when they did uh, Darcy. Yeah, when, with Cindy. With Cindy yeah, Darcy. when he did, um, when he did uh, Mr. Darcy with Cindy, yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of trailers. I don't see a lot of full movies, so I, all my impressions of everybody is from, like, these, these trailers in my head. <laughs> well, obviously, they've left an impression. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of Charles, let's go there, shall we? <laughs> let's, let's go to it. When Falls the Heart. Um, from, from what we can tell, this looks like possibly the only period piece that you've done. Um, did, do you have to do any research for that or was there anything I specific did. that you wanted to, I'm going to have to, to learn reach about for that? very deep into my memory to, to pull out details of this time, but, um, go all yeah, no, I definitely did. <laughs> yeah. You, so if you, if anything, uh, if you guys can think of anything that'll help trigger, um, that'd be great. Um, yeah, no, I do. I definitely did research. I was so, especially at that time, I was so gung ho on uh, on doing all the all the character work in a way that sort of um, falls away slightly as you become an older actor. Um, but no, I, I did tons of research uh, into the period, but what was going on in the world, what, how to wear your your clothes, things like this. Um, some of which applied here and there but I think that anybody who who has seen the show knows it's sort of a its own period piece uh, of time um, yes. that doesn't doesn't uh, feel the need to be strangle held by you know what was actually going on in the 1910s yeah. it's flexible yeah <laughs> it's a little flexible that's a good way of saying it <laughs> well I mean, you probably had to do a ton of research for figuring out what kind of knife you carved the initials so you could still say, so you could say, I still have my thumb. You know? That's so funny. <laughs> That's the part I was just watching on YouTube before we started. I, I saw you guys talking about that and I was like, oh yeah, I remember that, that scene. Um, yeah, I remember. I, I, it's, it's funny. A lot of my memories are about like what was happening on set while we were doing the scene as opposed to the content of the actual scene but i remember yeah we well, were at that big, yeah we'd love to know we, yeah, at, we, we love bts stories <laughs> i what was uh, aaron and i were sort of getting to know each other and i was i was definitely nervous it was one of my first acting gigs i mean i would my first gig was in 2012 and i think this aired in 2015 or something like that and so we mm -hmm. filmed it in 2014 so it was it was still pretty knew and I just kind of I, I think I just didn't want to screw up and I knew I had to do this knife bit but I, if I if I remember right there was like a piece of wood that they had stuck over the letters and they were like all you have to do is pull this off because I, I didn't do anything with a knife did I no, no you the were knife just, was before you were recalling it oh. yeah you were finding it yeah, I'm not even remind, I'm not even remembering it clearly um you had yeah, to remember... pull down the moss right yeah. yeah it's all coming back yeah <laughs> yeah, it was wet. I remember it was very wet that day. <laughs> hey, that works. <laughs> so I don't know if you heard about this, but after the character of Jack passed away in season five, I saw a handful of people online say, what if Charles came back? <laughs> and what if Charles started approaching Elizabeth to try to court her again. What's what's your opinion on that? What's your take on that? 
and then people started picketing outside the Hallmark Studios fences, I'm sure. Um, I, <laughs> I, I didn't see that uh, at the time. This is the first I've heard about that. But I, even if I had seen it, uh, I've also seen the reaction to that season and that character. And so I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have thought there was any, anything uh, possible there. So. <laughs> Well, if you could write a storyline for Charles to appear again, what would that be? You know, it's funny. I did a movie last year with Andrea Brooks and, uh, and we were sort of reminiscing on, on when calls the heart and, uh, and the whole universe uh, that it, of that show. And we thought Chris, Chris McNally is a good buddy of mine um, mm-hmm. and has been, since either of us had any professional gigs we were in class together in like the early 2010s and uh we were roommates at one time um yeah we would uh we would like help tape each other for auditions and stuff back in the day and lines with each other and stuff and yeah um and so andrea and i were joking that it'd be really funny if uh if i came back somehow and because he's kind of a rich guy right yes on the show yeah and then I was a rich guy. <clears throat> so if we had some sort of business venture and it seemed like I was over Elizabeth, but then at the end, I'm not over Elizabeth and he has to shoot me. <laughs> like a, st- like a, like a Mexican Duel. standoff in Jamestown <laughs> or Hope Valley. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Going a so. slightly different direction than they <laughs> usually would go, but... <laughs> Okay. There's gun. There's people shoot guns and stuff, right? Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Occasionally, yeah. But you don't see a lot of people getting. You don't see shot, a lot of people guess, getting right? shot. Okay. Yeah. No. Oh, we'd find a creative way to do it, but. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> seven, seven years have passed in in Hope Valley since we saw Charles. Okay. What What do you think he's up to? Do you think he's married, kids, still Just, pining away? I, I'm picturing like one of those shrines um <laughs> <laughs> and he's just sitting alone in the dark in a room filled with elizabeth uh photos no i don't know um eating fried chicken <laughs> with his fingers <laughs> on the he's floor having a picnic like on the floor in, in endgame um <laughs> where he's just he's just totally let it go that's what i want to see <laughs> okay i can uh, picture it now <laughs> not what i was expecting again but <laughs> i i it would it's like the 1910s i'm sure he's probably married and uh i don't know what he'd be doing i can't even remember what i feel like i was involved in shipping he, um, yeah he worked for her father mm, in the shipping okay. industry when was the titanic do you guys have any recollection about when the titanic 19... was made and stuff well, should have already when, happened by now. Because okay. well, did yeah, it already happen by the time in season two? So it would be. Oh well, then I think in, I think what probably happened is season two happened in like 1911, early 1912, mm-hmm. and then Charles, to get over it, um, went to Belfast and and got on the Titanic as like a luxury uh, experience. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, 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 I mean. They haven't said he didn't, so it's possible. It would be a beautifully tragic ending to the poor soul. <laughs> Just playing the violin, is it? Right? That was him. Yeah. I didn't know Charles played the violin. <laughs> he learned. He had the time. He, learned. he took up the violin after Elizabeth told him. <laughs> well, he certainly <clears throat> didn't seem like he wanted to learn to cook, so... <laughs> learn to cook did i i don't remember he he seemed quite uh shocked that elizabeth knew how to cook for herself oh instead of yeah, letting all the servants a, do it <laughs> right there's a lot of that yeah <laughs> old old timey uh <laughs> yeah i had a, he had a bunch of those sort of lines that were like oh this is why we don't like him because he uh <laughs> <laughs> well if you've seen any of our if you've seen any of our podcasts you've seen that i've tried to <laughs> I've tried to find a way to point out all the good lines he had as well. Thank you. Thank you. I, am, I have so many lovely people on Twitter and, and Instagram that are constantly like, we didn't like Charles, but we love you, Marcus. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
I I quite like Charles. I don't like him for Elizabeth, but mm-hmm. I quite liked his character. And I thought it was, I, I've constantly been telling Cammy since well before I was on the podcast with her that I secretly love season two because it, it gives so it's much no depth. Secret, really. <laughs> well, it used to be a secret. Now it's not. But it gave Elizabeth so much more depth to see all of her history and know all of her family and her friends and and see where that came from. And I think it it gave the show dif- just a different level of the backstory. Um, on behalf of season two, I thank you, Sarah, for uh, and 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 for being I, on the wall for us. And Charles truly cared for her, and her parents truly cared for her. We at yeah. the time saw it as an obstacle to what we were wanting to happen, but naturally, yeah. I, I, I play devil's advocate on the podcast. That's my role. Going, but he was so sweet. He was. He was. Yeah. I, yeah. I, have, I have acknowledged the fact. And way back when, when I started out as a blogger, I wrote an entire blog post of why Charles was justified. And why he and why he had every right to feel that he should be the one to win Elizabeth's heart. So I, I love that. I you guys will know the answer to this like much better than than I will. But my impression, what I've been told over the years, is that it's just like it's by far the most disliked season of the show. Is that fair to say? I get a lot of yeah. judgment for liking yeah. it. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> The reason why is because there is so much discord between Jack and Elizabeth. That's mm. that's why it's not even because of Charles. It's because there's just so much discord between the two of them. And Elizabeth is back in Hamilton, so she often acts very entitled. And Jack is struggling with that. And there's a lot of misunderstandings. And so we, all of us as viewers, <laughs> we're just like stop it <laughs> yeah no, I, but I, there I were a that. lot of misunderstandings and a lot of drama in season eight so you know i haven't done a poll lately but that would actually be a very interesting question I've, which I've is the least things. popular <laughs> season now is it season two or is it season eight <laughs> for uh for my brother chris i hope uh i hope it's season two i'll take the bullet on you know one. And, and my, I, I'm also, I also play devil's advocate for, for season eight stuff as well. But I think, I think once season nine airs, it'll just give that ability to kind of move past it. Like right. there's a few might maybe didn't want to see happen or that wasn't your choice. But once you can kind of see how it progresses, I think, I think I'm hoping that a lot of right. The discord kind of dissipates and yeah, a lot of things make sense in retrospect. And that was actually one uh, point that I haven't made it yet because we haven't gotten there. But in the season two finale, you know, there are several moments that would not have meant as much if all of the drama of season two hadn't happened. So, Mm. so it was, it was all very necessary as far as we're concerned. That so. um, that finale, they, I don't know if people, maybe this isn't like public knowledge, but that was like a last second thing, the, um, the like really? me proposing. Did you guys know that? Oh. No? Okay. No. Yeah, I was actually in LA with Chris, I think. Um, and uh, <laughs> we were we were down there for pilot season and I thought I was wrapped up on, on, the, on the show for that season. A um, little bit, I know I was wrapped up for good, um, but uh, <laughs> that's irony. <laughs> but but they called and uh, and they were like, oh, hey, we want to fly you back to Vancouver because we have this idea where you'll propose and Jack's getting ready to propose and he'll come around the corner and you'll already be down on on your knee. And I think that was the moment I knew that I was going over a bridge that the fans would never <laughs> forgive. Because <laughs> in my mind, the whole the whole season, I was like well, I'm not going to end up with her, but maybe if like they give me like a scene or a couple scenes with like Andrea's character, um, yeah, nurse Faith. Joy, Faith. Okay. Faith, yeah. mm-hmm. um, or any other available female, I could feel like, Hey, here, here I am. And in I go, like I'm a part of this now. Um, right. But no, they, they literally had me proposing and breaking up the, the whole thing at the end. So I was like, Oh, <laughs> well there's there i mean there's so much to be said about that uh one thing is the other the other aspect that i always hear about season two and why people 
were thrown by it is because season one was all in Hope Valley. Mm. And then season two was very split between this small frontier town and the big city. And it just had a very different feel to it. And I think, I think that after kind of getting that feedback, they, they went back to just having, having yeah, all that the was, show in the small town. That was going to be one of my questions, actually, if that sort of, did they ever go back to, to Hamilton in future seasons or? They, well, they, no. well the Jack, Jack went back to ask That's true. her father's permission to marry her. In like a scene or a like? A scene. Oh, okay. One scene. And was it, yeah. was it the same? I can't remember his name. Was it the same actor who played her yes. father in the? Okay. Yeah. So Sanford. they did sort of. Yeah. Sanford, yeah. So I guess, I mean, I guess it seems like they tried to expand the the universe, but it was really like the fan base really wanted just much more of, uh, you know, that, that small town feel to it. And it's totally understandable. So. Yeah. yeah. I also have to say, so my, my children were probably around three and five. Yeah. At the time, maybe. Um, that was their first introduction to a cliffhanger was. <laughs> so they're like, they, what happens? Where do we go from here? They, like, you got to wait. <laughs> they screamed when they saw Charles down on one knee. They screamed uh, and they're like, uh, we have to wait till next children's week. Was, now. They were like, we have to wait till next week. And I was like, we have to wait months. <laughs> to it's going to be a bit of time. <laughs> oh, so, man. Yeah. So, and they still talk about that. <laughs> It's funny, after after we did the after it aired uh, the first Hardy's family reunion the the conference that uh, uh-huh. they do do they still do that every year? Um, well, not with, they not with COVID. Yeah, with COVID, not right. with COVID, okay. but they were doing it up they until been. up until right. COVID happened. They were doing it. Right. Yeah. So they they did the first one of those, and then I came to that, and it's just like it was so funny how. Oh, overly no. nice everyone was to me because they, <laughs> oh good that's better than the alternative <laughs> oh no no you never get that it's so funny at least not in this on, on this network um or anywhere really people are people are smart they know that it's a character like almost all the time and so um i just don't have the following that's big enough to necessitate the crazy people to think that you're the actual <laughs> character Maybe once or twice here and there, but um, really, I. <laughs> but no, everybody at the Hardy's family reunion was just—they were just like overly nice. They were like, "You, you did such a vital thing for the show, and you played such an integral part." And like, I was like, "Thank you. I, I'm glad, happy to take the bullet for." <laughs> oh, I think I better keep my initial reaction to myself. <laughs> If it was from the heart, I'll, I'll totally accept it. <laughs> oh, well, um, number one, it was dramatic uh, because I was pregnant at the time. So <laughs> I had terrible insomnia. So I was I was binging a lot of it at night on Netflix. And so, you know, it, it comes to the ring. It comes to the ring first. And so I went because, you know, the, there's the knock on the door mm. and. And I went, oh, here it comes, here it comes. And then, and then you see the ring. And I'm like, oh, and then I see Elizabeth's face. I'm like, oh, she looks nervous. No! <laughs> I guess that idiot. I didn't Stop see smiling. that. I was like, it's the wrong man. <laughs> and then Jack mm. comes around uh. the bend, like, around the corner of the door. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And the way he, I just have it in my head, the way he falls back against the door. And then they got, there was a beautiful shot. It was a very smart was, shot where you see that his face and then we're shot. deep in the, in the background. It was, yeah. yeah. I love that shot. Yeah. It and really was like, a great shot. And the world hates me. <laughs> <laughs> but the sincerity <laughs> in your face was so beautiful. <laughs> you, had to, yeah. you had to take your shot. Like, I mean, I, it, it makes sense. Yeah, you should have maybe given that. it a little time. But I guess she was going to get proposed to by him. So, yeah, better make a right? move. So if somebody asked you to defend Charles, like, what would you say to to people? Oh, man. Um, I, uh, there's nothing. I'm trying so hard to remember everything that he does, but I don't remember him doing anything 
malicious. Um, nope. I think he was just kind of bad at reading a situation. <laughs> I, I I gotta tell you, as these scripts were coming yeah. at me, I was like, I was like, it seems like this guy genuinely thinks that like they are meant to be together and they were childhood like it seemed like they had some genuine history yes. um, and um and so for him i i think it would be completely uh just impossible to understand how she could go to this town and then this dude that she just met you know and like i think from charles perspective jack thornton was competing with their history and from the audience perspective, Charles was competing with the history of the show. And so, um, yeah, that's what I wrote. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I feel that like, is pretty much. I, I feel like Charles could have, I don't know, I, I thought sometimes about like, well, what would I do differently if, uh, if I played it again? And I don't know, I don't know what I would do different, but yeah, it is what it is. Hey, I think that's fair enough. When you've known somebody your entire life and you've been in love with them for longer than you're willing to say, and then all of a sudden this new guy shows up when you think you've got time, yeah, your feathers are going to get ruffled. You know, <laughs> mm. you know I, think if, I think if I had to play it again, I'd play him a little more self-respecting um, and less oblivious, if that makes any sense. You know? Yeah. I think, I think it, he was uh perhaps uh, unlikable partially because there were clues about the way she was behaving and if and if he had sort of respected that a little bit more but it wasn't a lot of the writing i gotta tell you it was it was very much like this guy has blinders on he he wants right. her and so i don't know probably didn't want people to like him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know, because I, I, yeah, I got a lot of conflicting reports from, you hear things from various higher ups and stuff. And so I, I heard years later that they, at first they were like, let's do um, the, what do they call the three way thing? Love the triangle. The love, love triangle. triangle. Yeah. Wow, that's a very obvious name for a thing I should have <laughs> remembered immediately. Yeah, three um, <laughs> um they were like let's try the love triangle thing and then i think that halfway through that season or towards the end they were they were like no let's not do that so i feel like there was some back and forth um in what the plan was but at least that's how it felt certainly i bet yeah. <laughs> so do you have a favorite part about playing charles if you had to pick one yeah i, I like it's a fun little tango <laughs> yeah that was funny Sammy really was hopes the first, it's the tango <laughs> dancing the tango was the first thing that, that Aaron and I did I think we met at the dance lessons for the tango oh, um, oh wow they, be, yeah before I ever filmed the day um, they set up these these dance lessons at one of the dance studios in downtown Vancouver and I remember going there uh, to meet her and to do some some dance lessons because I was supposed to be good at it um, and if I went at a snail's pace then I could pull off looking like I was good at it but I was not good at it whatsoever nor did I have any confidence doing it um <laughs> could have fooled us <laughs> I I don't know I want I've seen that scene a couple times because it pops up on Twitter sometimes and I'm like I can see how slow I'm going to make sure I get it all right um <laughs> <laughs> but uh the tango was fun I, I what's really fun about that show is just like they have this old timey town. It's out in the outskirts of Vancouver and they just go there every day and they, they shoot all day and then they go home. And like you work really reasonable hours. It's a familiar location all the time. And I know it's one that they go back to year after year. And so there's um, sort of a, a familial um, and it's an ensemble cast uh, certainly at this point. And so it's a very familial thing that they got going on. And that was, that was a lot of fun to be a part of for a bit. Right. Okay, so the last section we have, we call them Rosemary's Rapid Fire. So this is going to be a little bit harder because it's been a while for you, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see how well you do. <laughs> I'm not going to get any of these, but go on. <laughs> no, no, no trivia. No trivia. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> what was your favorite set? On when calls the heart. I guess you gotta 
break it down from Jamestown. Um, rapid fire. Is there a rush? Do I have to go? Oh, through? no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Um, the, there's some cool ones. Uh, the saloon, I guess. Yeah. It's the biggest room that I could remember. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're in like an old timey Western type thing when you're in there. So that's yeah. fun. It's now a very upscale restaurant run by Chris McNally's character. I was going to say, he has, character he has upgraded some, it a little bit. It, <laughs> isn't there like gambling? Like, isn't, doesn't he run oh, yeah. some gambling thing in there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And he, and he partakes in the gambling games a lot. Oh, he is, he is going <laughs> to corrupt that town so fast. <laughs> in a wholesome way. Get it, not us. In a wholesome way. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I have to def I have to jump in and defend that though because <laughs> because everybody that's like one of the negative comments that people say all the time it's like oh a saloon owner you know like okay. how can Elizabeth be with a saloon owner and yeah. and um my husband actually owns a brewery so I'm always like it's or, okay like <laughs> You're like alcohol is like somehow not like it's out uh, there it's moral not moral now yeah well, and Sarah's There's a teacher so. And I'm a teacher, so it's very similar. Oh, yeah. There you go. Very similar setup. So I was like, eh. So when she chose the saloon owner, were you, because it has such a close line to your own life, were you like, yeah? I, you know, I, I, I was slightly leaning towards the Mountie, um, just from uh, the okay. familiar, the familiar yeah. part of the history. But I, because of, and this was a very different type of love triangle because you didn't know a lot. I think on a lot of shows when they have the love triangle triangle, you kind of know which way it's going. Mm. Um, and so you can kind of just get behind that character. And like, you know, if it had been that way with Charles, we all would have known it was Jack. So we would have been rooting for him. Yeah, that would have been because, a real shock. If she was like, <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> yes, I do. will marry you. Uh, <laughs> But with this one, I I couldn't get behind either character fully because I I didn't know I didn't know which way it was going, and I didn't want to be very disappointed or feel um, invested in one of them. So I tried really hard to kind of stay impartial as mm. much as I could. Um, but yeah, I I'm excited about season nine. And what about what about you, Cami? Were you happy oh, or gosh, sad? I thought I was going to escape this. <laughs> <laughs> I was slightly more invested than Sarah was in Mountie Nathan. I, I appreciate I will, the honesty. I will admit it. I I wanted I wanted to see her conquer her fear of being with another Mountie because I thought that was a lot of what was holding her back as she was afraid of losing him mm. again. I did uh, want Mountie Nathan, but I'm. But moving forward, I'm totally going to watch season nine and I'm kind of excited to see where they're going to go with it. So mm. I'm, I'm very uh, curious to see what kind of storylines they're going to do with Chris's character, Lucas. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. Whenever, whenever I see him, I'm always, I'm always grilling him. I'm like, what's, what's going on? Like, what, uh, what do they got you doing on there? And, uh... Are you going to tune <laughs> um, in and find out? <laughs> I've watched <laughs> I've watched a, at least one or two episodes with him um, before when he was when he was auditioning for the show he sent me a, a picture of his TV and he was watching one of the episodes that I was in and I actually I had no idea that he was even auditioning um, I put it together later but uh, yeah I thought it was it was funny because it, a month later he's like oh yeah I'm gonna be on that show and I was like that's why he was sending me that photo he's doing his research. <laughs> I'm so curious. At least the questions keep coming to mind now. I know that they brought Dan back on uh, on When Hope Calls. Did that mm -hmm. that aired already? Right? It was a Christmas yes. thing they did yes. on Christmas. GAC. So what is he a what what it form was, does he? Come it was in? in a dream, um, but it was it was heavily alluded to that he was coming to her in a dream, like his spirit. To was Abigail, to that Lori's that character, to, to right. Abigail. Mm -hmm. In like. So uh, like it a was fantastical way. Like he's, it wasn't foreshadowing for him. Being no, no. Flesh at some no. point. So it was very much that he's still deceased. It was very much kind of sending a goodbye message. I'm proud of her. I'm proud of uh, my son who I've never met. And, okay. um, 
She's happy doing that a she's... great job with little Jack. I couldn't be prouder of either of either of them. That kind of thing. It's oh, a nice thing yeah. for the audience. It, it was. was. It felt like a Christmas present. Yeah, yeah. we, we like, were we were both crying. We were just uh, like, oh, this is so beautiful. They, they did it really well. They had some really funny lines that called back to like season one of the show and, and season things four. that he and Abigail had talked about. Um, yeah. And so it was it was just a really nice it was a really nice way to kind of have some that closure. Dan, that, I think. Yeah, that guy Dan, he's the real deal. He's he was a really lovely dude when I was on that uh, show for that season he was so sometimes in those scenarios there's like a weird uh, like um, alpha male competition thing but Dan never <laughs> had that energy at all he was always just so uh, Australian like jovial <laughs> welcoming and like yeah just a, a cool dude and he, had, he did an awesome, awesome short film uh, shortly after, or sometime during. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. right towards the end of that. Yeah, I saw that. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. That was really good. Yeah. I still haven't seen it, so I'm going to have to take your word mm. for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, outside of your character, Charles, is there any other character on One Calls the Heart that you would want to play for a day? Uh, you know, I actually auditioned, uh, originally auditioned for, um, for Lee Coulter. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I auditioned for Lee Coulter. Um, he rides up on a, a motorcycle. He rides up on the motorcycle. I yeah. can see you doing that scene for sure. <laughs> I can too. <laughs> yeah. Um, the cabin though, like he's, he's one of a kind. No one was getting that role besides that guy, I don't think. Um, we actually have the same agent, uh, him and I. Uh, but yeah, Eva, I know. <laughs> she's uh, Eva Eva Bourne's agent too. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. No, I auditioned the or oh, geez. Uh, originally auditioned for for Lee Coulter, um, and that character was was really cool. Uh, I liked how like forward thinking he was, and like he was trying to bring new tech to the town, and yeah. So that one seemed fun. Yeah. Who's the uh, the guy that owns the hardware store? Uh, Ned or? Oh, Ned Yost. Ned Yost. Yeah, I want to be Ned Yost. If they ever get rid of <laughs> Ned Yost, I want to slide in there. I just want to be like, I want to pop in like once every couple episodes and like offer people right? like buckets well, and, and hammers or just, whatever they need. He just invented the Band-Aid last season. Oh, he's going to be rich. Yeah, he's, he's going to be rich. He invented rich. the Band-Aid. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> That's an awesome storyline. He got a patent. Yeah, he got a patent yeah. and everything. <laughs> He's gonna be out. I am poor, coming back from Hamilton. I'm just gonna slide in and run the hardware store. I don't want any problems. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually the general store. So you'll oh, be selling sorry. everything. Yeah. I'll sell every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oatmeal everything. and <laughs> screwdrivers and all of it. Whatever you need. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of hardware, what is a modern convenience that you would take back to 1910 if you could? A modern convenience I would take back to 1910. Um, well, I'd already have a time machine, so I'd probably be pretty good <laughs> to go. But uh, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> what would I take? What would I take back? Um, I would take back. Uh, <laughs> it seems like such a, an easy question, but. Uh, the possibilities are so endless. <laughs> it's true. I'm trying to come up with a clever answer, but uh, I just take back a car, like a modern vehicle, or like an airplane. When did airplanes come along? Probably uh, not yeah. until later. I take an airplane, blow everybody's mind. Yeah, they they just have hot air balloons coming this next season. So <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw I saw a picture of Chris and, and Aaron in a hot air balloon on my Twitter the other day. Yeah. That, that surprised me a little bit. But <laughs> oh wait, no, I take it back. Airplanes did exist, but they weren't taking any passengers. They were in the very beginning I stages. Would, I would take a helicopter and I would park it right in the middle of Hope Valley and just <laughs> blow everyone's mind. Wow. I'd be like, you, you know, saw a motorcycle might... a few years back, but you ever seen one right? of these things? <laughs> she might have to pick Charles then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I'm back and I got a bigger rig. Hot air balloon, <laughs> helicopter. You're pulling in a little bit of James from Yes I Do, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd steal one of his. They should do a movie where one of these guys, uh, one of these ladies even just crosses over between all their old movies. They're like a multiverse type uh, Oh, that would be thing. so fun. Yeah, that'd <laughs> that be would cool. be really awesome. Um, would you, not Charles, Marcus, would Marcus rather eat at a saloon or a cafe like Abigail's? No, yeah, definitely a saloon. <laughs> definitely a saloon. I, I'm a sucker for pub food and sports on the tv so yeah but there's no tv <laughs> that's true that's true there's gambling though so that'd there's be gambling. enough to pull me in the doors you can challenge lucas to a game of darts <laughs> yeah. i could crush him oh <laughs> oh boy them fighting words <laughs> i'll do one guest star where i come on and just whoop chris at darts <laughs> i, I like that it would- that would be something to see. That would totally be something to see. Uh, oh, Marcus, this, is, this has been so much fun. Thank oh, you good. so much for taking this walk down memory lane with us. Yeah, of course. So where can people follow you and find you on social media? Oh, I never get this right. Uh, on Instagram, <laughs> at Marcus underscore Rosner. And then on Twitter, at the Marcus Rosner, because I don't know why I named it that in like 2010, but I did, and now it's going to live That was a me. popular way to go it was. back then. I know, several like if people. you were famous, or like you were Bill Gates or somebody, like who had to distinguish between others. Like I nobody was, else would have this name, so. Yeah, it was like I'm the Marcus Rosner, really thought <laughs> a lot of myself. Um, so those two, and yeah, I think that's it. All right. Well, well Hardy. I'm going, yeah, I'm going to keep on defending Charles as we make our way through the rest of season two. And Thank you. We've heard a lot of really good arguments as to why we should at least take pity on the poor man. <laughs> <laughs> or don't. Or don't. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Hardys. We hope you have a great day. Thank you so much, Marcus, for joining us. We'll see all of you later. Bye. Bye.